Saturday Night Live. I'm Jessica. I'm going to do the announcements for you. Um, so just a reminder about parking. If you drove here tonight, um, could you please not park in Brownies, Chicken parking spots? There's some Northridge ones here, or the dentist doesn't mind because they're closed. Um, we also have a website of Knowing Christ 365 on Facebook for those of you that um, are on social media. If that's just a site where we all kind of um, can post um, ideas and things that positive affirmations and stuff about Jesus. So if you're interested, you can check that out. Um, baptisms, we're gonna be having baptisms. So if you haven't been baptized mm -hmm. and you're thinking about it and God's put that on your heart, there's a sign up sheet on the side table that you can put your name on or see Raymond if you're just considering it and haven't really made up um, your mind. If that's something that interests you, Raymond can give you more information about that. Also, um, if you're interested in serving um, here at Saturday Night Life, if that's something that you're interested in maybe being a part of and getting connected, you can see Raymond or myself. Um, I am the worship leader here for music, so if any of you have a musical talent or play an instrument, you can um, get connected and talk to me. Also, um, Bibles, if you don't have a Bible, there are Bibles um, for free on the side table. Feel free to grab one um, and take that home and uh, keep it for your own. Um, is there anything else? Yeah. Clean up, yeah, if you wanna help clean up at the end of the night, stick around and um, just tidy up, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, other than that, we have Scott, I believe. What? Oh, we have um, a podcast um, and recorded live. So if you're wanting to share the message or rewatch it again, that is on nrchurch.ca. Go to media and then go to SNL. Go to media and then go to SNL. This is my first time doing announcements, so thanks. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah. Thank you, Jessica. Woo. All right. Welcome, Scott. Hi, everybody. My name is Scott. Hi, Good Scott. to see you. Um, Okay, yes, like I said, my name's Scott. Um, the Bible is a book written by God, well, it's God's uh, anointing grace on the people that wrote it, and the Bible is full of knowledge, wisdom, and truth that we are to live by, and Jesus was God in the flesh, and he went around teaching things, and who better to take advice and wisdom from than God? So tonight we're going to listen to what God says about worry, or also known as self-imposed stress. Um, so tonight's message is titled The Big Picture. Now, uh, like you guys, I was in the Hope for Freedom Society. Uh, I was in five times. I remember coming in the first time. I came in on a conditional sentence order from jail. And I came in with my jail grays on and my jail shoes to the house. And um, I just was on the street for like 15 years down on Hastings Street doing crime and drugs and everything to survive. And I, came, I got a conditional sentence order to the house and I got there and I had no clothes, no money. And I was constantly worried. I was walking around the house for the first week every day in the jail grays, worried about where I'm gonna find clothes worry about, you know, I had no shoes, I have to go to meetings and everything, I was going in my jail grays, uh, you know, I was always constantly stressed out, worried about, you know, how do I look, people are going to laugh at me, I'm in my jail stuff, and, and you know, I felt, I had low self-esteem, uh, I, I, I hated myself for the last 15 years for what I was doing, and when I got to the house, you know, there was guys there with a few months clean and everything, and they're all looking good, and I was so insecure, and I wanted to look good also. So I'd worry all the time and then, you know, so to look good, instead of, you know, listening to what they're teaching me at church and listening to, you know, the meetings and trying to get inner inner help for my for my heart, my emotions and my soul, I, you know, I, I thought, okay, I gotta look good. So what do I do? I go to the gym. I start working out and uh, I figure if I look good, then, you know, it's everything's gonna be okay. And then uh, I, I got some work going on and I got some money. I was always stressed about money and I started to get some clothes. And you know, these are all my plans of how I'm gonna succeed. And you know, and once I got some clothes going on and my hair cut and, some, and, and you know, a bit of money in my pocket right away, I had to go find some girls. 
because, you know, if I have a girlfriend and I got a little bit of money and I'm working and I'm working out and I look good, who can say that I have something wrong with me? And I was worried constantly about what I looked like. And so all these decisions and my own worry and stress on what I think should be done in my life, boom, I moved out at eight months, relapsed, took a dirty cake, and then I was back down to Hastings Street, uh, came back to the house again a few months later. Now you think I'd learn, and the same people are telling me the same thing, but I know better. I'm worried again because I'm back there in my jail clothes. I have no money. I have no job. I look skinny. What are people going to think of me? Ba ba ba. So, what does Scott do? Scott goes to the gym. <laughs> Scott starts to work a little bit. Scott starts to womanize. Oh, yeah, I believed in Jesus, but I wanted to do what I wanted to do according to what I wanted my plans because I'm smart and I know how to fix myself. Boom, relapse again. A few months later, I'm in jail, I phone the house up, I get another CSO back to the house. And of course, how do I show up? In my jail grades. So what does Scott do? Scott goes to the classes, he quickly does his step work to get on step four so I can go to the gym. Because what are people going to think of me? I need to have some money. I need to look good. I need to get a job just so everybody thinks that I'm okay. Boom. Relapse again. Come back to the, to the house a few months later again, the fourth time. What does Scott do? Well, Scott shows up in his jail clothes. <laughs> Scott knows what to do. Scott needs to look good. Scott's worried what people are going to think. Scott goes to the gym. Scott gets a job. Scott womanizes, Scott relapses, Scott's in jail for armed robbery. I come back the fifth time, things are different. And today I'm working on 55 months clean. Woo! Yeah. Wow. So, what happened? And that's what we're going to look at tonight. Luke 10, 38 to 42. If I can't get this to work, you're going to have to go up and down. Okay. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him, hit, welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teachings. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. Can you go up, please? <laughs> Excellent. Mm -hmm. Tell her where to go. But Martha was distracted. Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are so anxious, a.k.a. worried, and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Now, I guarantee you, <coughs> That the, like I said before, I don't know if I said this, but, uh, the Bible is full of wisdom and knowledge. I guarantee you, if you listen to these words tonight, it's going to be about four verses, and you apply them to your life and follow them, your life will immensely improve. Okay? So, Martha's serving, she's all working. You ever go to a party and the person whose house is at, running around doing this, running around doing that, trying to get the food out, trying to, that's what Martha's doing. And her sister, Mary, has chosen to sit at Jesus' feet and just be with Jesus. Not to let the, 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 the worries of the world, the worries of the moment, get in her way. Her eyes are focused on Jesus. Jesus says, Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. You see, the things of the world that we worry about, they're temporal. I need clothes, money girlfriend, job. All those things are going to rot, die, go away. <coughs> Jesus is forever. Eternal life is forever. Amen. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus and your life will improve. Okay, so we're going to go to, I think it's Matthew 6, <coughs> something, something. 6, 26, 33. Amen. That's the one. Okay, so this is Jesus, God in the flesh, telling us about life. Very important. Now, these verses 
you should try to memorize them. Go back to the house, memorize these verses. These are really good for your life because Jesus is telling you advice and how to live. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value of, are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, worried, can add a single hour to the span of his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spit, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles, unbelievers, seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Here's the good one. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So, Jesus is saying, like I was saying, yeah, I'm worried about what I look like, how I'm dressed, what I'm going to eat, where I'm going to work, I'm in the house, I need to get some money, I need a plan moving out, I need to do all these things that the world tells me I need to do to look like a man. Jesus is saying, no. Jesus is saying, God knows where you're at. God brought you to hope for freedom, to hear about Jesus, to save your soul from eternal hellfire. Jesus is trying to tell you something tonight, and every night you come to church or Bible study, okay? He's trying to tell you that he wants you to come to him, let him worry about your life for you, okay? Don't worry about your clothes, your food, what you're going to do. Jesus has a plan. He, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Okay, so above everything else in your life, seek Jesus, seek God first. Seek his salvation for your life. Read your Bible. C concentrate on what the Bible tells you to do. And focus on that like Martha did. She had her eyes on Jesus. There was two sisters. One chose Jesus. One chose the worries of the world. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. And we're going to find out why he is saying that. Can you go back up for a bit? And all these things shall be added on to you. All what thing? All everything. Everything you need. God knows you need clothes. God knows you need a job. God knows how the world runs. God says, focus on me. Believe in me. Repent of your sins. Have faith in me. And I will take care of you. That's what Jesus is saying. But you have to seek him above all else. And he will give you what you need is a Bible verse that says he will give you the desires of your heart. Okay, so go on to the, Thank you. Go on to the next one. Okay, this is a good one. Now, if I were you, I have this memorized. You should memorize verses in the Bible. If something sticks out for you, take it home, read it over four or five times, do one line at a time, memorize it, read it over a few times. When you got that one down, go to the next one, memorize some scripture. It's what helps you in life. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And be anxious. Do not be anxious about anything. Anxious means worry. Do not be worried about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Okay, so again... God's trying to tell us through his word, don't worry about anything. But by prayer, this is Paul, actually Apostle Paul, I think, telling us this. But by prayer and supplication, prayer means pray to Jesus, pray to God, and thanksgiving. Thank him for what he's done for you, for saving you. Tell him what you need. Ask him for things that you need. God knows you need them anyway, but God wants a relationship with you. He wants you to talk to him. And to make your request be made known to God. And here's the kicker. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understandings, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. 
He'll take the worry away. If you know that God is for you, nothing can be against you. God has a plan for you and a purpose. Tell him what you need. He already knows. He wants a relationship with you. And he will give you a peace. Now, I told you I had 55 months clean. Now, when I came into the house this time, I was a little bit worried. But as I grew in my faith, I just surrendered my whole life to Jesus. I said, okay, I'm a slow learner. I've tried this four times. My plans, my ways, my worry, my stress. All I did was relapse made a fool of myself over and over again. This time, I went to Bible study. I went to church. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I surrendered it completely and utterly. I pray every night on my knees, and I say my request to God, and I end off with, listen, you know, this is what I'd like, but if it's not your will for my life, don't give it to me. Give me what you want for me. And I have a peace that I don't understand, okay, because I, I, I have a peace that surpasses all understanding, knowing that God is in charge of my life, God is directing my life, and God has my back. And I've never felt this way before in my life, and that's how I maintain 55 <coughs> months clean, because every day I know that whatever happens, God is in control. God is taking me here, God is taking me there, and, and I'm happy with whatever happens. Everything I wanted probably wasn't good for me. But what God gives me, it blesses me. I have peace and joy in my heart. Okay? So the last verse here. It's not going to be a long message. Okay. Now. This is why we shouldn't worry. Jeremiah 29, 11. This is, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The Lord. Plans. Okay. Plans to prosper you and not to do this. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's the translation I have, so I'll say that again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Okay, so first four times I come into the house. Oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. I, 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 I but I want to do this on my terms. I want the blessing, I want to say I'm a Christian, but I still want to do what I want, I want to live the way I want to, I like sin, I want to keep sin, I want to believe, but I want to vote, right? You know, and, 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 and I, I relapse, 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 relapse. This time I come in, I give it all over, enough of me. My worst decisions, I mean 25 years of, of a wasted life. That's what my decisions got. Really, all my relationships, everything, is my great ideas of what, what Scott needs. Okay, so this time I gave it to God and I got what God wanted for me. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. He has plans for me. If you accept him as your Savior, believe that Jesus is God's Son, admit that you're a sinner, repent of your sins, that that means turning away from your sins, not wanting to do them any longer, and follow what the Bible teaches for your life, God will put you on his path. If you do not accept Jesus as your Savior, God cannot put you on the path that he's planned for you before he created the world. Each one of us, he has a plan for. Okay, so once you do that, he'll put you on the plans. And it's amazing. Like I, I ruined all my family relationships, my financial everything. I was a bum. And uh, with a huge criminal record. I had nothing. Now, over the last four years, I've got my family back, my son back in my life, my mom and dad, my sisters. They never wanted to talk to me again. They told me 10 years ago after the first relapse, never call us again. Two years ago, they all flew in from where they lived, met me at a restaurant. Ta-da! I was like, wow. And then I owed... Uh, thousands of dollars in bad credit cards from when I was high. Uh, God provided me with jobs, lots of them. And uh, I paid it all off. And uh, see, these things can happen for you too. He can, he can rearrange your life. The Bible says that all things work together for good, that them that love God for those who are called according to his purposes. So if you're here, or any time you come to church, 
And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, God is calling you to listen and to get it and, and to change your life and to accept him as your Savior. And to, he has a plan for you. We've taken ourselves way off the plan because we're selfish, we're sinful, we want what we want. God has a better plan for us. God will put you back on the path that he has started for you from the beginning of time that you went off on your own will. God is powerful enough and mighty enough to place you back on there and bring back everything, everybody that he had planned for your life. But it takes time. I was always in a hurry. I got to look good now, now, and I go off. It takes time because God has to work in other people's lives too that maybe don't like you anymore and this to bring them back. So it's a, it's, a, it's a circle. God has to work. God can do it. But you have to follow Jesus. You have to be obedient. You have to persevere in that. Keep focused like Mary or Martha on Jesus at all times and God's plan will unfold in your life. Okay, so that's, uh, that's about it. So, okay. I don't know. What? What's wrong with that? Okay, so we're going to close now. Okay, so if you don't know Jesus, it's, it's simple, okay? You have to believe, turn from your sin, and follow Jesus. And that's the best decision I ever made. My life is so much better than the way I thought I could run it. Okay? Jesus wants to do the same thing for you guys. Same thing he did for me and for Raymond and for Ian, Mike, Freya. He wants to do it for you guys. Okay? All you have to do is believe that Jesus is God's son, died on the cross to save you for your sins, rose again the third day, and he's up in heaven. You have to admit that you're a sinner, repent of your sins, which means, yes, God, I've sinned against you. I am sorry for those sins. I don't want to do them anymore. Please send me your Holy Spirit <coughs> to help me not do those sins anymore. And then follow. Read your Bible and follow him. And Jesus says, if you do these things, I have a plan for you. Don't worry about stuff. I'll take care of you. You're more important than the fields and the birds and everything. I know what you need. Let me have charge your life and watch what happens. Okay, so let's pray. Okay, so if anybody doesn't know Jesus tonight and you'd like to, just raise your hand up and I'll pray for you. Okay. Dear Lord, we thank you for your, your, your generous gift of Jesus Christ on the cross. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins. And I pray, Lord, that you will touch everyone in this room. Lord, you will come to live in their hearts and that they will follow you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.